As I embarked on my journey to the secluded cabin nestled in the heart of the mountains, a sense of anticipation mingled with trepidation. The winding road ahead seemed to stretch endlessly, leading me deeper into the unknown. The solitude of the mountains promised the perfect setting for my new novel, a tale that would captivate readers with its raw emotions and gripping suspense. The crisp mountain air filled my lungs as I left the bustling city behind. The towering trees whispered secrets as I drove further into the wilderness. The isolation was both daunting and exhilarating, fueling my creative spirit. I couldn't help but wonder what inspiration waited me in that lonely cabin. As the sun began its descent, casting long shadows across the landscape, I finally arrived at my destination. The cabin stood before me, weathered and worn, yet exuding an eerie charm. It seemed to have witnessed countless stories unfold within its walls. And now it was my turn to add my own chapter to its history. Unlocking the creaking door, I stepped inside, greeted by a musty scent and a dimly lit interior. The cabin was modest, with a rustic charm that spoke of simpler times. The crackling fireplace beckoned me, casting dancing shadows on the worn wooden floor. It was here, in this solitude, that I hoped to find the inspiration that had eluded me for far too long. As I settled into my new surroundings, I couldn't help but notice peculiar details. Strange notes and drawings adorned the walls, left behind by the previous tenant. They depicted haunting images, evoking a sense of unease within me. Who was this person? And what secrets did they hold? Curiosity gnawed at me, urging me to uncover the truth behind these enigmatic messages. I examined the notes, deciphering cryptic phrases and deciphering hidden meanings. They hinted at a dark secret, a secret that seemed to seep into the very fabric of the cabin. With each passing moment, my unease grew. Shadows danced on the walls, playing tricks on my mind. The silence of the mountains became deafening, broken only by the sound of my own racing heartbeat. Doubt crept in, whispering doubts and planting seeds of fear within me. Little did I know that this journey, this search for inspiration, would lead me down a path I never could have imagined. The cabin held secrets that would test the limits of my sanity and threaten my very existence. But for now, in this moment, I was determined to embrace the unknown and let the story unfold. As I settled into the solitude of the cabin, the weight of the previous tenant's presence lingered in the air. The flickering flames of the fireplace cast eerie shadows on the walls heightening my senses and fueling my imagination. It was time to immerse myself in the world of my novel, to let the words flow from my fingertips onto the blank pages before me. Days turned into nights and nights into days as I delved deeper into the recesses of my mind. The story began to take shape, the characters evolving with each stroke of the pen. But amidst the creative fervor, a sense of unease continued to gnaw at me. The cabin seemed to have a life of its own, whispering secrets in the silence. The floorboards creaked underfoot as if carrying the weight of forgotten tales. Shadows danced in the corners of my vision, playing tricks on my weary mind. Was it my imagination or was there something more sinister at play? I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes peering through the cracks in the walls. Paranoia gripped me and I found myself constantly glancing over my shoulder, expecting to find a presence that wasn't there. The line between reality and fiction blurred, and I questioned my own sanity. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I decided to take a break from my writing and explore the surroundings. The mountains beckoned, their majestic peaks calling out to me. I ventured into the wilderness, hoping to find solace in nature's embrace. As I hiked through the dense forest, a sense of tranquility washed over me. The rustling leaves and the gentle breeze whispered tales of their own, offering respite from the cabin's oppressive atmosphere. But even amidst the beauty of nature, a lingering sense of foreboding remained. Returning to the cabin, I noticed a peculiar figure in the distance. A man standing at the edge of the clearing, 
watching me intently. His eyes held a mixture of curiosity and warning, as if he knew the secrets that the cabin held. I called out to him, but he vanished into the shadows, leaving me with more questions than answers. Back inside the cabin, I couldn't shake the encounter from my mind. Who was that man? And what did he want? Was he connected to the strange notes and drawings left behind by the previous tenant? The threads of mystery began to intertwine, weaving a web of intrigue that threatened to consume me. As the night grew darker, the cabin seemed to come alive with whispers. The walls whispered secrets, the wind whispered warnings, and my own thoughts whispered doubts. Fear gripped me, but I couldn't turn away. I had to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. As the days wore on, the weight of unease settled deeper within me. The cabin's secrets continued to haunt my thoughts, urging me to uncover the truth that lay hidden within its walls. With each passing moment, the line between reality and fiction blurred, and I found myself questioning my own perceptions. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, I began to meticulously search every nook and cranny of the cabin. Drawers were emptied, shelves were scrutinized, and floorboards were tapped, all in the hopes of unraveling the enigma that surrounded me. And then, I stumbled upon a hidden compartment beneath the floorboards. My heart raced as I pried open the concealed space, revealing a collection of old journals. The pages were yellowed with age, their words etched in faded ink. These journals belonged to the previous tenant, a writer who had sought solace in this very cabin. With trembling hands, I began to read. The writer's words painted a picture of desperation and obsession. He, too, had been consumed by the cabin's mysteries, driven to the brink of madness. The notes and drawings that adorned the walls were his own, a manifestation of his unraveling mind. The more he delved into the secrets of the cabin, the more it consumed him. As I read through the entries, a sense of dread washed over me. The writer had become convinced that the cabin held a malevolent presence, an entity that fed on the fears and vulnerabilities of those who dared to enter. He spoke of whispers in the night, of shadows, that danced with a life of their own. But he could never escape the clutches of the cabin's grip. The more I immersed myself in the writer's words, the more I felt his torment seep into my own being. The cabin's walls seemed to close in around me, suffocating me with their secrets. I couldn't help but wonder if I too would succumb to the same fate. Days turned into nights, and nights turned into a never-ending cycle of fear and uncertainty. Sleep eluded me, as nightmares plagued my restless mind. The cabin's presence loomed over me, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked within. But amidst the fear, a flicker of determination ignited within me. I couldn't let the cabin's grip consume me entirely. I had to find a way to break free from its clutches, to escape the tendrils of fear that threatened to strangle my sanity. With newfound resolve, I made a decision. I would confront the cabin head, on, face the darkness that resided within its walls. The truth awaited me, and I would not rest until I unraveled the secrets that had plagued me since my arrival. Little did I know that my journey into the heart of darkness was only just beginning. The cabin held more than just secrets. It held a darkness that would test the limits of my courage and resilience. But I was determined to face it, to emerge from this ordeal with my sanity intact. As I delved deeper into the mysteries of the cabin, the weight of fear and uncertainty grew heavier with each passing day. The writer's journals had provided some insight, but they had also left me with more questions than answers. Determined to uncover the truth, I decided to seek out the locals who might hold the key to the cabin's dark past. I ventured into the nearby town, a quaint place nestled amidst the mountains. The locals eyed me with suspicion, their gazes filled with a mix of curiosity and wariness. I approached an elderly woman sitting on a bench, her weathered face etched with lines of wisdom and experience. Excuse me, I began tentatively. I'm staying at the cabin up in the mountains, and I've been experiencing some strange occurrences. Do you know anything about its history? 
The woman's eyes narrowed, and she regarded me with a mix of caution and concern. That cabin has a troubled past, she said, her voice tinged with a hint of sadness. It was once the home of a reclusive writer, a man consumed by his own demons. They say he disappeared under mysterious circumstances, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. My heart quickened at her words. The pieces of the puzzle were slowly coming together, but there was still so much left unsaid. I pressed further, hoping to uncover more. Is there anything else you can tell me? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. The woman hesitated, her gaze shifting to the ground. There are whispers, she finally admitted, her voice barely audible, whispers of a darkness that resides within those walls. Some say it's the writer's own madness that lingers, while others believe it's something more. My mind raced with possibilities. What had driven the writer to the brink of insanity? And what was this darkness that seemed to haunt the cabin? I thanked the woman for her time and returned to the solitude of the mountains, my mind filled with a mix of trepidation and determination. Back at the cabin, I resumed my search for answers. I combed through old newspaper archives, seeking any mention of the writer's disappearance. And then, buried within the pages of a forgotten article, I found a clue. The writer had been involved in a series of altercations with a local cult, a group rumored to dabble in dark rituals and forbid knowledge. The cult's influence had spread like a shadow, casting a pall over the town and its inhabitants. It seemed that the writer's obsession with the cabin had drawn him into their web, leading to his eventual demise. Armed with this newfound knowledge, I knew I had to confront the cult and uncover the truth once and for all. I reached out to a journalist friend, hoping to shed light on the dark underbelly of the town. Together, we delved deeper into the cult's activities, unearthing a web of deceit and manipulation. But as we got closer to the truth, the danger escalated. Threats were made, warning us to abandon our investigation. The cult's reach extended far beyond what we had anticipated, and we found ourselves trapped in a game of cat and mouse. Fear gripped me, but I refused to back down. The truth had to be exposed, no matter the cost, with each step closer to the heart of the cult. The darkness within the cabin seemed to grow stronger, as if it sensed our intrusion. As I prepared to confront the cult, I couldn't help but wonder if I was walking into a trap. The fear was palpable, but so was the determination to bring justice to the writer's memory and free the cabin from its haunting past. Little did I know that the final chapter of this harrowing tale would test my courage and resilience in ways I could never have imagined. The darkness awaited, and I was ready to face it head on, armed with the truth and a burning desire for justice. The weight of anticipation hung heavy in the air as I prepared to confront the dark secrets that lay hidden within the town's history armed with the knowledge of the cult's involvement in the writer's disappearance. I knew that unraveling the truth would not be an easy task, but the burning desire for justice and the need to free the cabin from its haunting past propelled me forward. I reached out to my journalist friend, who had been instrumental in uncovering the cult's activities. Together, we devised a plan to expose their sinister operations and shed light on the writer's mysterious fate. We knew that the key to unraveling the truth lay in delving deeper into the past, unearthing forgotten memories and hidden connections. Our investigation led us to the town's archives, a treasure trove of forgotten stories and faded photographs. We spent hours poring over old newspaper clippings, searching for any mention of the cult's activities or the writer's disappearance. The more we dug, the clearer the picture became, we discovered that the cult had deep roots in the town, its influence stretching back decades. They operated in the shadows, manipulating the lives of unsuspecting individuals and using fear as a tool to maintain control. The writer had stumbled upon their dark secrets, and they had silenced him to protect their twisted agenda. As we pieced together the puzzle, we realized that the cult's reach extended far beyond the confines of the town. 
They had connections to influential figures. They're influential figures. Their influence seeping into every aspect of society. It became clear that exposing them would not only bring justice to the writer, but also dismantle a network of corruption that had plagued the town for far too long. With our evidence in hand, we decided to confront the cult head on. We knew it would be dangerous, but we were prepared to face the consequences. We reached out to law enforcement, sharing our findings and urging them to take action. But to our dismay, we discovered that the cult had infiltrated even the highest levels of authority. Realizing that we were on our own, we devised a plan to expose the cult publicly. We organized a town meeting, inviting the residents to hear the truth about the writer's disappearance and the cult's malevolent presence. The atmosphere was tense as we stood before the crowd, ready to unveil the darkness that had plagued their lives. As we presented our evidence, the room fell into a stunned silence. The truth was undeniable, and the fear that had gripped the town for so long began to dissipate. The residents, once held captive by the cult's influence, found the strength to stand up against their oppressors. In the aftermath of the town meeting, the cult's operations were dismantled, and its members were brought to justice. The writer's memory was finally honored, and the cabin, once a symbol of fear, became a testament to the triumph of truth over darkness. But the scars of the past remained, etched into the hearts and minds of the town's residents. The journey had been arduous, and the fear we had felt throughout our investigation had left an indelible mark. Yet, it was through facing that fear head on that we had found the strength to bring about change. As I reflect on the events that unfolded, I realize that the true horror lies not in the supernatural, but in the depths of human darkness. The story of the cabin and the writer's disappearance serves as a reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places, and it is up to us to confront it, no matter the cost. The aftermath of our victory against the cult left a lingering sense of unease in the town. The darkness that had once shrouded the cabin and its secrets had been exposed, but the scars it left behind were not easily healed. As the days turned into weeks, a growing sense of paranoia began to take hold of the residents. Whispers echoed through the streets, fueled by fear and uncertainty. The once tight-knit community now seemed fractured, with suspicion casting a shadow over every interaction. No one knew who to trust anymore, and the weight of the past continued to haunt us. I found myself caught in the midst of this growing paranoia, unable to escape its suffocating grip. The victory we had achieved felt hollow, as if the darkness we had fought against still lingered, waiting for an opportunity to strike back. The line between reality and imagination blurred, and I questioned my own sanity. Every creak of a floorboard, every flicker of a shadow, sent shivers down my spine. The town had become a breeding ground for fear and it infected my thoughts, twisting them into a tangled web of doubt and suspicion. I couldn't help but wonder if the cult's influence had truly been eradicated, or if there were remnants lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. My journalist friend, too, had succumbed to the growing paranoia. We would meet in secret, our conversations hushed and filled with coded language. The fear of being overheard, of our every move being monitored, consumed us. We had become prisoners of our own minds, trapped in a never-ending cycle of doubt. As the days wore on, I began to notice subtle changes in the behavior of those around me. Friends became distant, their smiles forced, their eyes filled with a flicker of suspicion. The once vibrant town had transformed into a ghostly shell, haunted by the memories of its dark past. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me that eyes followed my every move. Paranoia gnawed at my sanity, and I found solace only in the solitude of the cabin. It had become my sanctuary, a place where I could retreat from the prying eyes and the growing sense of unease. But even within the cabin's walls, I couldn't escape the tendrils of fear that wrapped around my mind. Every creak, every gust of wind sent my heart racing. The memories of the writer's disappearance and the cult's malevolence haunted me, refusing to let go. 
I reached out to others who'd been affected by the cult's presence, hoping to find solace in shared experiences. But their stories only fueled my growing paranoia. Each tale of betrayal and manipulation served as a reminder that the darkness we had fought against was not easily vanquished. Days turned into sleepless nights as I grappled with my own demons. The line between reality and nightmare blurred, and I questioned whether the fear that consumed me was a product of my own imagination or a lingering presence from the past. In the depths of my despair, I realized that the only way to break free from the grip of paranoia was to confront it head on. I gathered the courage to reach out to my journalist friend, and together, we vowed to uncover the truth behind the growing sense of unease that plagued the town. Armed with determination, we delved deeper into the shadows, seeking answers to the questions that haunted us. We uncovered a web of deceit and manipulation that extended far beyond the cult's reach. The paranoia that had gripped the town was not a mere figment of our imagination. It was a tool used by those in power to maintain control. As we exposed the truth, the town began to awaken from its slumber of fear. The realization that they had been manipulated and deceived fueled a collective anger, and the bonds of community were slowly rebuilt. The darkness that had once consumed us began to recede, replaced by a newfound resilience and determination to never let fear rule our lives again. In the end, it was the power of truth and unity that shattered the grip of paranoia. The scars of the past remained but they served as a reminder of the strength we had found within ourselves. The town, once haunted by its own shadows, emerged stronger, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The town had finally begun to heal from the wounds inflicted by the cult and the grip of paranoia that had consumed us. But just as we thought we had escaped the clutches of darkness, a sinister presence began to make itself known. It started with small, seemingly insignificant incidents. Objects misplaced, strange noises in the dead of night, and an unshakable feeling of being watched. At first, we dismissed them as mere coincidences, remnants of our collective trauma. But as the occurrences grew more frequent and unsettling, fear once again took hold. Whispers of the sinister presence spread like wildfire through the town. The once restored sense of unity began to crumble as suspicion and unease seeped back into our lives. The scars of the past were torn open anew, and the wounds of fear reopened. I found myself at the center of this growing unease, plagued by a sense of dread that clung to me like a shadow. The cabin, once a symbol of triumph, now became a haunting reminder of the darkness that still lurked. I couldn't escape the feeling that the sinister presence was somehow connected to the cult, that their influence had not been fully eradicated. Desperate for answers, I reached out to my journalist friend once again. Together, we delved into the depths of the town's history, searching for any clues that could shed light on the source of this new terror. We uncovered tales of past tragedies, unsolved mysteries, and a long-forgotten secret society that had once held sway over the town. As we dug deeper, we realized that the sinister presence had roots that stretched far beyond the cult's reach. It was a force that had plagued the town for generations, feeding off the fears and vulnerabilities of its residents. The cult had merely been a pawn in its twisted game. The more we uncovered, the more we realized that the sinister presence thrived on the darkness within us. It preyed on our deepest fears and insecurities, manipulating our minds and driving us to the brink of madness. It reveled in the chaos and discord it sowed, tearing apart the fabric of our community. But we refused to succumb to its malevolent influence. Armed with the knowledge of its existence, we rallied the town once again, determined to face this new threat head, on. We organized community meetings, sharing our findings and urging unity in the face of fear. As we confronted the sinister presence, we discovered that its power lay in our own vulnerabilities. It fed off our doubts, our mistrust, and our willingness to turn against one another. But by standing together, we weakened its hold, 
we refused to let fear divide us, and in doing so, we chipped away at its power. The battle against the sinister presence was not without casualties. Friendships were strained, trust was shattered, and the wounds of the past were reopened. But through it all, we held on to the belief that unity and resilience would prevail. In the end, it was our collective strength that drove the sinister presence back into the shadows. The town, scarred but not broken, emerged from the darkness with a newfound sense of purpose. We had faced our fears, confronted the demons that haunted us, and emerged stronger than ever before. As I reflect on the events that unfolded, I realize that true horror lies not in the supernatural, but in the depths of human darkness. The sinister presence was a manifestation of our own fears and insecurities, a reminder that the battle against darkness is an ongoing one. But as long as we stand together, united in our determination to overcome, we can face any challenge that comes our way. The town had weathered the storm of the sinister presence, but the scars it left behind were deep and lasting. As we tried to rebuild our lives, a sense of unease lingered in the air, a constant reminder of the darkness that had once consumed us. In the aftermath of our battle against the sinister presence, I found myself plagued by nightmares. Visions of shadowy figures and whispered voices haunted my sleep, leaving me restless and on edge. The line between reality and the imagined blurred, and I questioned my own sanity. I sought solace in the company of others who had experienced the same horrors, hoping that together we could find some semblance of peace. But as we shared our stories, a chilling realization dawned upon us. The sinister presence had not been vanquished. It had merely retreated, biding its time in the shadows. Fear once again gripped the town, spreading like a contagion. The wounds of the past were torn open anew, and the sense of unity we had fought so hard to rebuild began to crumble. Paranoia seeped into every interaction, and trust became a rare commodity. As the days turned into weeks, the darkness within us grew. The sinister presence fed off our fears, exploiting our vulnerabilities and driving us further into despair. It reveled in our descent, into darkness, relishing in the chaos it sowed. I found myself drawn deeper into the abyss, unable to escape its clutches. The nightmares that plagued my sleep began to bleed into my waking hours, distorting my perception of reality. Shadows danced at the corners of my vision, and whispers echoed in my ears, taunting and tormenting me. Desperation consumed me, and I turned to the journalist friend who had been my ally throughout this harrowing journey. Together, we delved into the town's history, searching for any clues that could help us understand the sinister presence's origins and weaknesses. But the more we uncovered, the more we realized the depth of our predicament. The sinister presence had been a part of the town's fabric for centuries, a malevolent force that thrived on the darkness within us. It had seeped into the very soul of the community, leaving no corner untouched by its influence. As we confronted the sinister presence head on, we discovered that it had taken on a new form. It had found willing vessels among the townspeople, individuals who had succumbed to their own inner demons. These vessels became conduits for its power, spreading its influence like a contagion. The battle against the sinister presence became a battle against ourselves. We had to confront our own fears, our own weaknesses, and find the strength to resist its seductive pull. It was a battle fought not with weapons, but with the power of self-reflection and the determination to reclaim our own light. But the descent into darkness was not without sacrifice. Friendships were shattered, families torn apart, and lives forever changed. The sinister presence reveled in our pain, using it as fuel to further its own malevolent agenda. In the darkest moments, when hope seemed all but lost, a glimmer of light emerged. The town, battered and broken, rallied together. We realized that the only way to defeat the sinister presence was to stand united, to face our own demons and reclaim our collective strength. Through sheer will and unwavering determination, 
we began to chip away at the darkness that had consumed us. We reached out to those who had fallen under the sinister presence's sway, offering support and understanding. Slowly but surely, we started to rebuild the bonds that had been shattered. As the days turned into months, the sinister presence's grip weakened. It became a mere shadow of its former self, unable to maintain its hold over the town. We emerged from the darkness, scarred but resilient, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The battle against the sinister presence had taught us that true strength lies not in the absence of fear, but in the courage to confront it. We had descended into darkness, but through our collective will, we had found our way back into the light. The town had emerged from the darkness, but the scars of our collective ordeal remained etched upon our souls. We had faced our fears, battled the sinister presence, and reclaimed our unity. But there was one final truth that awaited us, a truth that would test our resolve and shake the very foundations of our existence. As the days turned into weeks, a sense of unease settled over the town once again. Whispers of a hidden secret began to circulate, hinting at a truth that had been buried deep within the town's history. It was a truth that had been shielded from us, kept hidden by those who sought to protect their own interests. I found myself drawn into the heart of this mystery, unable to resist the pull of the truth that lay just beyond my reach. With each passing day, my determination grew, fueled by a burning desire to uncover the secrets that had haunted us for so long. Together with my journalist friend, we embarked on a journey of discovery, delving into the town's archives and seeking out those who held the key to the truth. We unraveled a web of deceit and manipulation, uncovering a dark underbelly that had long been concealed. As we peeled back the layers of secrecy, we realized that the sinister presence had not been an isolated incident. It had been a symptom of a much larger problem, a problem that had plagued the town for generations. The cult, the sinister presence, and the hidden secret were all interconnected, pieces of a puzzle that had finally come together. The truth we uncovered was both shocking and devastating. It revealed a history of corruption, greed, and a thirst for power that had infected the very core of our community. Those we had trusted the most had been complicit in perpetuating the darkness that had consumed us. The revelation sent shockwaves through the town, shattering the fragile peace we had fought so hard to restore. Anger and betrayal simmered beneath the surface, threatening to tear us apart once again. But amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope emerged. We realized that the only way to truly confront the truth was to face it head on, to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. We organized town meetings, demanding transparency and justice. We refused to let the sins of the past define our future. But as we confronted the truth, we also had to confront our own complicity. We had turned a blind eye to the signs, allowed ourselves to be manipulated by those in power. It was a painful realization, but one that fueled our determination to create a better future. The battle for justice was not without its challenges. Those who had held power for so long fought tooth and nail to maintain their grip. They used every tactic at their disposal to silence us, to discredit our claims. But we stood firm, united in our pursuit of truth and justice. As the truth came to light, the town underwent a transformation we shed the shackles of our past, embracing a new era of transparency and accountability. The wounds of betrayal began to heal, replaced by a renewed sense of purpose and unity. In the end, it was not just about uncovering the truth. It was about reclaiming our power. We had been victims of manipulation and deceit, but we refused to let that define us. We emerged from the darkness, stronger and more resilient ready to build a future based on trust and integrity. The journey had been long and arduous, filled with fear and uncertainty. But through it all, we had learned that true strength lies in the courage to confront the truth, no matter how painful it may be. We had confronted our own demons and emerged victorious, forever changed but unbroken. The town had undergone a profound transformation 
Emerging from the darkness that had plagued us for so long, we had confronted the truth, exposed the corruption that had festered within our community, and fought for justice. But as the dust settled, a new challenge loomed before us, the choice between escape or perish. The revelation of the town's dark history had left us reeling. The weight of the truth pressed upon our shoulders, threatening to crush our spirits. We had fought so hard to bring the hidden secrets to light. But now we faced a daunting decision to stay and rebuild or to flee and start anew. For some, the scars of the past were too deep to bear. They yearned for a fresh start, a chance to leave behind the haunting memories and forge a new path elsewhere. The fear of the unknown beckoned them, promising a clean slate and the opportunity to rebuild their lives far from the shadows of the past. Others, however, were determined to stay and reclaim what was rightfully theirs. They saw the town not as a place tainted by darkness, but as a community with the potential for redemption. They believed that by staying and rebuilding, they could create a future that was free from the sins of the past. The divide within the town grew, tensions simmering beneath the surface. Each side argued passionately for their chosen path, their voices echoing through the streets. It seemed as though the very fabric of our unity was once again at risk of unraveling. In the midst of this turmoil, I found myself torn. The allure of escape was undeniable, the promise of a fresh start beckoning me. But I couldn't shake the feeling that abandoning the town would be a betrayal of everything we had fought for. I couldn't turn my back on the community that had become my home. As I grappled with my decision, I sought solace in the stories of those who had faced similar crossroads in their lives. I listened to the tales of resilience and determination, drawing strength from their experiences. It became clear to me that the choice between escape and perish was not just about physical location, but about the strength of our collective spirit. In the end, I chose to stay. I couldn't abandon the town and its people, not after everything we had been through together. I believed that by staying, we could rebuild not just the physical structures that had been damaged, but also the trust and unity that had been shattered. The road to recovery was long and arduous. We faced countless challenges, both external and internal. The wounds of the past were slow to heal, and the scars remained as a reminder of our collective trauma. But with each passing day, we grew stronger, more resilient. Together, we rebuilt the town from the ground up. We repaired the physical damage. But more importantly, we worked tirelessly to mend the broken bonds of trust. We held community gatherings, fostering open dialogue and encouraging forgiveness. We acknowledged our past mistakes and committed ourselves to a future built on transparency and accountability. As time passed, the town began to thrive once again. The wounds of the past became a source of strength, a reminder of our resilience in the face of adversity. We became a beacon of hope for other communities, a testament to the power of unities, a testament to the power of unity and the ability to confront our darkest truths. The choice between escape and perish had been a defining moment for us all. It had tested our resolve our commitment to each other and to the town we called home. And in the end, we had chosen to face our fears head, on, to confront the darkness within and emerge stronger than ever before. The story of our town serves as a reminder that fear can be conquered, that unity and resilience can triumph over even the darkest of secrets. We escape the clutches of our past, not by running away, but by standing together and facing our demons. And in doing so, we found a strength within ourselves that we never knew existed. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.